Good evening, everyone. I'll call to order the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, February 25th, 2021, 6 p.m. As everyone is aware, we're still conducting our meetings via electronic means via Governor Lee's Executive Order Number 71. We'll continue to evaluate the COVID status and at appropriate time make a transition back to open, open public meetings when we feel safe to resume. I'll pass it now to City Attorney Litchford. Thank you, Mayor. This meeting is being conducted in accordance with uh, Governor Lee signed Executive Order Number 16, subsequently extended by Executive Order Number 71. Uh, as part of the uh, Executive Order, the cities and municipalities and other public uh, entities are permitted to uh, conduct public meetings virtually uh, if there's a finding by the body that for the protection of the public health, safety, and welfare of the community, given the state of the emergency that's been declared by the governor. Uh, that it was appropriate to, ha to have these meetings virtually. And this body has made that finding and we would request that Ms. Middleton reflect in the minutes that the body, uh, the C city council has made a acknowledgement and determination that to protect the public health, safety and welfare to conduct this meeting virtually. Thank you, sir. I would now like to ask Daniel Beard, pastor of Action Church, and also one of our police chaplain, chaplains, if he would provide our invocation and lead us in our pledge, if everyone will stand. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, and God, we know that you're blessing this nation, and you're blessing East Ridge in the midst of everything that's going on. We thank you, God, for all those blessings, even when we can't see it, we know that you're working in all of this. God, we ask that your hand would still continue to be upon East Ridge and each of these leaders give them guidance and wisdom as they make these tough decisions for those that have trusted them and voted for them. God, I pray, God, that these blessings would fall not only on our leaders, but on our citizens, those residents here in East Ridge. And God, may we continue to move East Ridge forward May we not only be pioneers, but pioneers of progress and see more done and see our community be a great place to raise our families. In Jesus name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Mayor Williams. Here. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Here. Council Member Cagle. Here. Council Member Helton. Here. Council Member Witt. Here. City Manager Dorsey. Here. City Attorney Litchford. Here. All right, we'll move to item four, the consent agenda. I assume everyone's had a chance to review and read the minutes of the February 11th council meeting, the January 12th, January 2021 financial statement and the declaration of surplus property. I will entertain a motion for the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion by council member Helton and a second by council member Witt. Do we have any discussion, corrections? I see none. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. All right, we'll move to item five, communication from citizens. Since there's no opportunity for a live citizens comment during this meeting, any citizen desiring to address the city council had an opportunity to submit their comments via email to me at mayor at eastridgetn.gov from 12 noon Wednesday, February the 24th through 12 noon Thursday, February the 25th. Please keep in mind any citizen or business owner may contact the city, the council, the city manager, or myself at any time. I did have one communication from citizen, um, Robert Mayner, 4116 Wade Drive. Mayor Williams. In-person attendance by citizens to public meetings of any government body is essential for the dem democratic process in a free country. I would ask that the city council consider opening up the city council meetings to the public. This can be accomplished safely for those few citizens that wish to attend these meetings. 
some sort of effort should be put forth to re responsibility and safely open these public meetings as we move forward in 2021. East Ridge citizens worship at church, eat at pack exit one restaurant, shop at local stores and learn in school. So why keep citizens from attending public meetings of our local government body? Please consider this topic tonight for meetings beginning March, 2021. That is the only uh, communication from citizens. And I'll go ahead and, and comment on that. Um, as we've stated in the beginning, when we called to order that we are evaluating it as a week to week basis and make an appropriate decision to when open back up. Um, with the downturn of the, uh, we're seeing a, a downward tick on cases and stuff. So we're um, considering and planning on opening up. We discussed this with um, city manager also mentioned it uh, tonight that um, we'll probably open up unless we see any major, less or some major drastic turnaround, uh, we'll plan on opening up the first meeting in um, March. Yes, we talked about that actually a week, week or so yes, ago. Yes, we have. Um, so yes, that is our plan uh, if uh, the, the numbers keep going down, like you said. And by opening up, that also means we will still be um, adhering to social distancing guidelines within the, uh, the chambers as That's well. That's correct, thanks. for. I was going to mention that, but you got it. Thank you. All right. So I'll move into communication of council members. Um, I'll start on this side. Councilmember Cagle. Uh, I really don't have anything, but uh, for those of y'all that know Mr. Don Husky, we need to keep him, his family, in their prayers because he is at the hospital and he's been there for about five or six weeks. First three weeks, he was in there on oxygen. Now they took him out of oxygen and put him on the incubator. Oh no. And uh, so now they have, uh, he, when he went on that, went into a coma. Now they have took him off of the medicine that they keep him in a coma with and he hadn't woke up. So I seen an email tonight from his daughter says it don't look good. So oh, no. everybody needs to be praying for Don Husky and his family. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thanks for the information. I have nothing to mayor. Council Member Hilton. I would like to echo what um, Council Member Cagle said. Um, Don is a former mayor, so mm -hmm. let's just keep him in our prayers. Council Member Witt. Okay. I do have some information from the American Legion Post um, 95. They are having a fundraiser. They're located at 3329 Ringo Road in East Ridge. They've asked me to uh, mention that the Sons of the American Legion and the AL Riders are selling smoked pork butts, a cost of $30. One butt should feed six to eight people. The sides are slaw and beans and they come in quarts and it's $5 per quart. They're asking you to order now and to pick them up on Friday, March the 12th, or Saturday, March the 13th, after 3 p.m. So please support the American Legion. Call the American Legion to place an order. You'll get a message. Uh, leave a message for Rick Witt. The number is 624-9105. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'll definitely be placing an order. All right. Um, yes, I'll echo the same. I was unaware, but um, yeah, let's definitely keep Mr. Husky in your prayers. Um, like Council Member Helton said, he's a former mayor, and I just recently run into him and talked to him. So I'm um, sad. Yes, keep him in your prayers. Um, the other thing I had was, and I already covered it, was the open meetings. So we'll plan to open up our meetings again with social distancing and mask. Uh, starting the first meeting in March. Um, also, I'd like to mention that on February the 27th, the East Ridge Police Department in partnership with Speedway Corporation will participate in a Philly Cruiser event. The event is, will be held at the parking lot of the Speedway located at 4222 Ringo Road from 12 to three. Residents are encouraged to bring non-perishable food items and assist in filling the East Ridge Police Cruiser to help those in need. Police officers will be at the location to accept donations and you can remain in your car if you choose. All donations will be taken to the East Ridge Food Pantry to benefit those in our community. Anything you'd like to add, sir? Thank you. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is we always have a, a wonderful and a great library. I wanted to mention that March the 2nd, 3.30 to 5, 
will be a drive through Dr. Seuss. So um, it states you could not, would not want to miss a celebration such as this. So come out and see the cat in the hat and his friends. It's a free event, no registration required, but also please do stay and remain in your vehicle. But it's March 2nd, Tuesday, 3.30 to 5. I believe that's all that I have. I'll hand it now to city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to start by um, uh, uh, the whole council knows this obviously already, but uh, our human resource uh, manager, Trish Perry, retired on Friday. And um, she served the city for 42 years, uh, did an excellent job with everything that she did. Just want to, I meant to talk about this two weeks ago, but I neglected to, so I apologize for that. But she has, like I said, been with the city for 42 years. So I guess she started when she was one. Um, and we will miss her and we appreciate everything she's done for us. She's gonna come in a little bit to, uh, to help on a couple issues that we have uh, over the next few months, just to spend a few hours with us here and there, especially when we get our new HR person in, uh, which the uh, resumes have already started coming in and we may start interviewing even next week. So the timing of it works out pretty well. So we're looking forward to that. And I just wanna um, wish Trish a happy retirement. And we gave her some good stuff when she left too. We gave her a nice big engraved clock engraved clock, right? And what else did we get her, Diane? Some little, or Janet, I should look to you. <clears throat> a, cup, a couple cups and a couple little fun retirement gag gifts, gifts and things that they gave to her. It was pretty fun. It was pretty good. Anyway, uh, two other things. Uh, we uh, have heard from uh, the Metropolitan or the uh, Transportation Planning Organization that there may be opportunities for us to submit a couple projects for paving dealing with COVID relief money. And so we're looking into that right now. Those, the paving projects would deal with uh, what are called the functionally classified roads. So it's not neighborhood roads. It's things like uh, McBrien or um, Max Smith or things of that, that nature of a road. So we're putting some things together. We figure we can throw darts at the board. The worst they're gonna say is no, uh, depending on how much money's divvied. So we're trying to take advantage of this opportunity. We're gonna put a couple of those major roads through um, to try to see if we might be able to get some paving done on those. And we'll let the council know more about it. I think the deadline now is like March 14th, something like that, close to that, middle of March is when we have the deadline for that. Uh, the last thing I have is uh, Diane and I are feverishly working on budget prep right now for the city. She's entering in all the, the actuals, all the templates are ready. As soon as we get those numbers in, we're gonna be meeting with the department heads to start looking at our budgets. Uh, the philosophy that we usually start with is we try to have a bare bones budget with the uh, the items that we have this year and try to keep the level of service going forward for the next year. Then we look to see how our revenues are coming in. And then if there's any upward adjustments we can make, we, we also do that as well. Uh, if any of the anybody on the council has anything they want us to consider at this point of the budget process, please get in touch with me. I'm happy to talk to you about things that... Uh, might concern you or things that we may be able to look at while we're doing the budget process. If that means we turn in and already have and have that list started for the point where we have to have budget meetings and workshops and stuff too. So if there's anything of interest to you all, please just feel free to come see me. And that's all I have. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll move to item eight, old business. Mayor. Yes, no, yes, sir. One question, since he mentioned the roads did we decide what we was gonna do with McDonald down there because I'd come in from the Georgie side. You need a four wheel drive to come up through there. I think Assistant City Manager Custer is gonna address that. Yes, Mayor Council, um, I'm, uh, City Attorney Litchford and myself actually um, uh, got together, had a conversation about this uh, some time ago. Uh, um, Vice Mayor Johnson, I've had some conversations. I've had multiple conversations with citizens. Um, we have sent out a email. I'm not sure that we received a response yet to the county attorney's office just to let them know that we propose to close McDonald Road at Warehouse Road. Um, we That's on our resurfacing project for the spring. So we know that we've had trouble with um, trucks that are not supposed to be on McDonald Road utilizing that once the red light was installed uh, for life care it just created a, a better opportunity to use that you're also getting on a nice Saturday nice weekend 
uh, people that are attending the flea market, they're using that instead of Max Smith Road. So you're getting upwards of a thousand cars a day on a small residential street, which is a not a functionally classified road. Um, so to protect that community, um, protect the, the, the investment that we're fixing to make, we feel it would be better to potentially close that road, plan on having something to the planning commission to view at the very next planning commission meeting. And then upon their recommendation, um, bring that to council to vote. I've already got some engineering firms working on a design for the barrier um, that will separate state line from McDonald Road. Yeah, we'd mentioned that I think meeting two ago and the original the original road was not a thoroughfare through. It actually curved and went on down, so. It, that's correct. I mean, there, there, there's several things going on down there. There's a large development um, that's potentially gonna come. I've reached out to Catoosa County uh, multiple departments within Catoosa County. Uh, they have submitted a site plan just for some site development work. Uh, they don't have a proposed development at this time, but we want to make sure that we're able to protect the continuity of that neighborhood because that's what its true intent is. Um, and those, I think those residents deserve, deserve that from us to, to take an extra look and make sure that we're doing the right thing. So I plan on having that at the next planning commission meeting. And then um, after that, I'll bring it to city council for, for a vote. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move to old business, item A, ordinance number 1142. In order to the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, to amend ordinance number 481 entitled the East Ridge Zoning Ordinance Appendix A, Use Matrix Zones by Right to Allow Liquor Stores in Zones C1 Tourism Commercial District, C2 General Commercial District, C4 Planned Commerce Center District, C5 Neighborhood Commercial District, C6 Low Traffic District. This will be the second and final reading. He's got a mic back there. Yes, Mayor and Council, this was just a cleaned up the appendix from um, around the 1980s when they did the zoning matrix for our actually zoning ordinance. Uh, so this, since the referendum was passed, we've already moved uh, some legislation forward. This just allows it to be within those commercial zones. Thank you, sir. I will entertain a motion for ordinance number 1142. I make a motion to approve ordinance 1142. Second. We have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council Member Helton. Do we have any discussion? I see none. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Kegel. No. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Ordinance 1142 passed second and final reading. We'll move to item B, ordinance number 1143. In order to the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, to amend the fiscal year 2021 operating budget, ordinance number 1129 for various revenues and expenditures in the general fund, solid waste management fund, debt service fund, and capital project fund. So we the second and final reading. Yes, there's no changes. No so, changes. No changes. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion for ordinance number 1143. I make a motion to approve ordinance 11, 1143. Second. A motion to approve by Council Member Witt and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Do we have any discussion? I see none. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Ordinance 1143 passed second and final reading. We'll move to new business. Item A, public hearing for ordinance number 1144. This is a public hearing and ordinance number 1144 captioned an ordinance to the city council of the city of East Ridge, Tennessee to amend the zoning regulations and the zoning map of the city of East Ridge, Tennessee. So as to rezone the property located at 6205 Ringo Road Tax map number 169L-F-040 from R1 Residential District and M2 Light Industrial District to C2 General Commercial District. Thank you, sir. I will open up this public hearing. 
So would you like to explain? The yes. So mayor and council, just for a slight overview, this parcel is a fairly large parcel, several acres. Um, it sits just adjacent to the textile printing company between that and the old crystals location. Uh, most of us are familiar with that location. It's been vacant for some time. There's also been several negotiations back and forth about what potentially could go there. And I think now they're, they're kind of getting to a stage where they wanted to at least clarify that zoning because that was one parcel with three different zones. Um, so it's going to clean that up, bring that into that C2 zone, and then obviously will be more marketable for them. Thanks, sir. Do we have anyone in, in person to come before to appear at the public hearing? Nope. All right. Thank you. I will now close this public hearing and we will move into item B, ordinance number 1144. An ordinance to the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, to amend the zoning regulations and the zoning map of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee so as to rezone the property located at 6205 Ringgold Road, tax map number 169L-F-040 from R1 Residential District and M2 Light Industrial District to C2 General Commercial District. And this will be the first reading. I'll entertain a motion for ordinance number 1144. Make a motion to approve ordinance 1144. Second. All right, I have a, um, a motion by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council Member Witt. Do we have any discussion? I see none. Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Thank you. 1144 past first reading. We'll move to item C, resolution number 3115. A resolution of City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee to approve the appointment by Mayor Williams to the East Ridge Personnel Board. Um, first, let me say I am very tickled that we had um, quite a few applications for the Personnel Board. Um, so it is encouraging and it's exciting to see more and more um, citizens getting involved and wanting to participate in, um, in city government with us and greatly appreciate that. Um, I will um, be appointing Pamela Beard as my appointment for the personnel board. So I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3115. Approved. Second. A motion by Council Member Hilton and a second by Council Member Whit. Do we have any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Hilton. <clears throat> yes. Council Member Whit. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. We'll move to item D, resolution 3116. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, to approve the appointment by Vice, Vice Mayor Chauncey to the East Ridge Personnel Board. I'm going to reappoint Mr. Robert Jones. Thank you, sir. I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3116. I make a motion to approve resolution 3116. Okay. We have a uh, motion by Council Member Witt and a second by Council Member Helton. Any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Move to item E, resolution 3117. A resolution of the City Council for the City of East Ridge, Tennessee to approve the appointment by Council Member Cagle to the East Ridge Personnel Board. Yes, sir. Um, I want to appoint uh, Doris Rogers. Thank you, sir. I will entertain a motion for resolution 3117. Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Council Member Witt. Do you have any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. 
Vice Mayor Chauncey? Yes. Council Member Cagle? Yes. Council Member Halton? <clears throat> yes. Council Member Witt? Yes. Mayor Williams? Yes. Item F, Resolution 3118. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, to approve the appointment by Councilmember Helton to the East Ridge Personnel Board. Uh, yes, I would like to appoint Francis Pope. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion for Resolution 3118. Make a motion to approve uh, 3118. I'll second. We have a motion to approve by Councilmember Cagle and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Councilmember Cagle. Yes. Councilmember Helton. Yes. Councilmember Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Item G, Resolution 3119. A resolution of City Council the city of East Ridge to approve the appointment by council member Witt to the East Ridge personnel board. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I would like to appoint Debbie Moorfield. Thank you, ma'am. I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3119. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by council member Hilton and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Any discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. <coughs> Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Halton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. All right, we'll move to item H, resolution 3120. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee to donate 27 ballistic vests to the town of Lookout Mountain for use by their police department. Yes, Mayor Council, these are the vests, the old SWAT vests that were replaced a couple of years ago. They are out of date. Uh, City Attorney Litchford prepared a waiver and it was signed by the Chief of Police at East Ridge that they understand that they are out of date, but they will accept them. They were declared surplus at the last council meeting. A quick correction, you mean the Chief of Police of Lookout Mountain? That, what did I say? You. You said, uh, oh, no, just make sure for the record, of, we have it, yes. Chief of Police of Lookout Mountain <laughs> Thank signed you. it. Thank you. Well, let's let both sign. That's true. <laughs> I didn't sign it. <laughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3120. I make a motion to approve resolution number 3120. Second. You have a motion to approve by Council Member Witt and a second by... Vice Mayor Chauncey, do you need discussion? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Halton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move to item I, resolution 3121. A resolution of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, awarding bids for renovations of City Hall and the Fire and Police Service Center. Mayor and Council, um, staff advised for bids back around November for the renovation and ADA enhancements to the City Hall and the Fire and Police Service Center. During the budgeting process, we were able to allocate the funds um, for this project. We were able to receive two bids, one from Integrated Properties LLC for $291,589 and Robert Roberts LLC was $340,300. Um, there was some discrepancy within um, Robert Roberts LLC number, but that was what was recorded um, during the bid opening process. So staff would recommend that we select integrated properties uh, for a total not to exceed $291,589. Just to clarify what you said, the, the number that was recorded during the bid process, that was the number that they had on the piece of paper, not our number. That's correct. They just didn't add right, add correctly, excuse me, but it was still higher than the other bid. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. 
Thank you, sir. I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3121. Make a motion to approve resolution 3121. I'll second. A motion to approve by Councilmember Witt and a second by Vice Mayor Chauncey. Do we have any discussion? I have one I'd like to get clarified. Yes, sir. This 291589, not to exceed, okay. But then they've got over here, they've got about 235 add ons. Okay. So if we have to have these add ons, then the not to exceed is, uh, but then I spoke to Mr. Custer today and he explained to me what his plans are in this. So I just wish we could. Uh... Yeah, there were some discrepancies in material selections, um, which drove the cost up on some of the projects. One is, and, and I can give you a brief overview if you don't mind me taking a couple minutes. Uh, one of the projects that uh, Councilman Cagle is referring to is we are actually going to close this area off. Um, so this area will be secure during the day. So people won't walk through and, and use these back doors. Part of that will be removing um, or, or changing some handicap spaces. So our main handicap interest will actually be in the front with a double slide open glass front door. So you won't have to go up, try to pull any handles, push any buttons, It'll be an automatic door open and closure. Um, a lot of this is ADA upgrades that we're gonna, we're required to do and we're gonna work on them slowly. It was part of a study that was done for the city. Um, but as, as closing this area off, this back. Gosh, that might, does that might work any better? We had to turn it up just because we couldn't hear. So oh, okay. certain people talk, so this mic's just a little louder. Um, so part of it, the layout up here, we've got plenty of egress within this building itself. So we looked at all the egress patterns. So we're gonna actually build a area for all the attorneys and stuff to work in when they come in for court. So they'll have their own space because in the past they've always used the space in front of codes, but that wall will be actually extended out for a permit window. So you'll actually have somebody there all the time taking permits instead of having to get up going from one area to the other. Um, so there's a lot of those, there's some lockers that was in there that think, I think they had 18 or $19,000 for locker replacement. Those are gonna be rehab. So that'll be dropped down to around $500. So there's several things that I've went through and almost value engineered a, a way to get it down. That way, if we run into anything, we should be able to cover that um, under that not to exceed amount. So that's the ultimate goal. We're working pretty hard to stay with that, stay with that number. And I, and I appreciate a little of that detail. Um, also, as you mentioned City Hall, but you're also Fire and Police Service Center. Yes, we've had a- Do you uh, wanna talk had, a little we, bit about that? Absolutely. We, we've you. had a significant um, sewer drain issue there. And I, and I can tell you, this has gone on for nearly 20 years. There's just a sag in the sewer system. It, it, it happened actually at, during construction at some point, wasn't discovered till sometime later. So early in the 2000s, it was really noticed. Um, but in order to access that and be able to do it, it's gonna to have to be done nights or weekends because they're gonna to have to cut a large section of an admin hall up uh, to be able to replace that section of that, uh, that sewer. So we'll be able to do that, eliminate that drain. But once we come back, we'll come back with new flooring, new paint, and all the colors will mimic station two. So we use the same color, same concept and everything for the interior design of station two. Um, so that should help and help the livability. The floors over there are absolutely dead. They can't be polished anymore. There's, there's no hope for them. Same floors that's been there since uh, the thing was constructed sometime around 1994. Um, and obviously there's a lot of high traffic there. We wanted to do this a lot sooner, but it's gonna require fire apparatus to be parked sometimes outside. And you know, while we move everything back and forth in between the bay and with cold weather, you don't wanna take a chance on one pumps freezing up, but then also IV fluids and everything like that getting cold from being outside. So this kind of puts us more in a time frame so we can start on city hall. And then as soon as they hear, they can remobilize at, at fire and police. And then that gives Chief Allen, Chief Williams uh, time to sit down logistically and figure out how that's actually gonna work so we don't impair operations too much. So it's gonna be a good project. It's gonna be a great project for staff, um, especially with the remodel of all the bathrooms. That's something that's needed to be done for a long time. So finally getting around to, to getting that done, sprucing that building up and giving them a more homely environment because they spend so much time there. Yeah, thanks for explaining that. It's, I think the if I add the numbers up correctly, there, it's actually a little more of the 291 going to be spent for fire and police than the actual renovations here. That's correct. Yep. That's correct. 
and, and like I say, this is a starting point that we know we have some more ADA upgrades. We know that uh, if that building remains over time, we're going to have to continue to do some, some interior work, but also some exterior work to kind of bring it up to date, make sure that it's staying dry and things like that. Um, a couple other buildings that we're, we're having some issues with. It's just some of our, some of our city infrastructure buildings are starting to age out a little bit and we need to catch back up on some, on some maintenance and, and repair and replacement costs. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Roll call, Ms. Middleton. Vice Mayor Chauncey. Yes. Council Member Cagle. Yes. Council Member Helton. Yes. Council Member Witt. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Move to item J, discussion of budget amendment for funding new police officers. Before I start with that, I want to thank the council for approving those renovations. They are needed. Uh, we talked about this at the last council meeting because of various factors, COVID being one of those injuries and the fact that we're just getting busier and busier. We need to hire now two more police positions uh, for the department. And do you want me to run down the numbers that I've got? Okay. I think so. I think it, if not, I'm sure you'll be asked. <laughs> okay. It's in the memo that you all have. Yeah, well. it's, it's in the memo page, here, but follow along. For, for public, yes, please do. The uh, starting pay hourly for police officers is eighteen fifty four an hour. And that works out to, for a year, $67,801.39 for one officer for a year. Since we're asking for uh, three months, we hope to have these people on board by April 1st. Uh, the three months, um, two officers together would be $135,602.78 for a full year. For three months, the two officers' salary would be $33,900.70. Uh, those numbers are a little bit or need to be a little bit flexible because of the various costs for benefits depending on what their package is but it won't very much in order to equip those officers um, there are some items that we have like the duty weapon we have those already so we wouldn't have to purchase them some other things that we already have on hand but the equipment cost uh, well, uniforms, including winter coat, would be $650 each. And then a list of the other things that we'll need to, to uh, purchase. Their ballistic vest is purchased by a grant. So the total cost of the two officers, um, it would be, the equipment is $4,576.95, a total of $9,100. $53.90. So the total cost for two officers and the equipment that we need for three months would be $43,054.60. Approximately. Be very close to that. Well, I round, <clears throat> excuse me, I rounded to the nearest hundred. All right. Any, no. anything? That's, would you have anything else? That's what the cost okay. is for the two officers. Um, in addition to that, and Chief Allen can jump in, obviously, um, you know, the vehicles um, that we've talked about for these officers, uh, they're not, we don't have to have them till the next budget uh, because there's a couple of spares you could use. Uh, however, uh, it, it might be prudent that if this does get passed by council, um, that we go ahead and get those vehicles now and we could utilize fund balance to be able to purchase those vehicles. And we have the breakdown of the general fund and the drug fund or Diane or Stan does. Uh, we can talk about if we, when we get to that point. Uh, for a full year, the cost of these officers, as the chief said, <clears throat> salary and benefits are 135,600, miscellaneous 1,000, because you already got the equipment this year. So that's a total of about 136,600 next year. And as you remember in the memo, I put these costs next year would require a commitment from the council to find additional revenue to fund these positions for the future, because it's not part of our budgeted numbers this year. And we will be talking about them as we go through the budget process this next year. I just wanna make sure everybody's, everybody's aware of that. 
<clears throat> so thank you. Also, uh, as the city manager pointed out, we do have some spare cars. The spare cars are the worst ones we have. That when, when we get new cars, these are the ones that are going to be uh, surplus and sold. So, I mean, and you're running out of spare cars too. We're running out of spares. I had, we had one car that needed over six thousand dollars worth of repairs. It's for a 2014 Charger with ninety something thousand miles on it. I chose not to repair that car because it's not that car is not worth putting that kind of money into. When it when we get to uh, budget time, we'll have some more figures. Thanks, sir. Council, do you have any discussion out of? Um, your opinion, should we consider going ahead and buying the cars? Yes, now? please. Right. If you're uh, approving this, yes. So I'll tag on to that. So you mentioned fund balance. Um, I do agree with if we do go ahead and get them now. Um, you mentioned fund balance, but the last round of vehicles we actually, I think, financed or leased is what you're looking at outright purchase, or you mentioned fund balance. You consider an uh, outright purchase, purchase outright. in a fund purchase outright. Purchase okay. About right. And uh, do you have the numbers or does Stan? I have the numbers for the cars. So what we would be looking at is the same vehicles that we purchased the last time, and that is the Ford Interceptor SUV. That car, uh, the cost of the car is $40,517 each. That includes most of the equipment that we would need, such as lights, siren, console, the cage, uh, weapons rack. All those things would be in, included in that $40,000 price tag. In addition to that, we would add uh, the graphics, in-car radio and getting it installed, the in-car camera, having it installed, and a base for the computer in-car computer mount. Now, out of the 40517 for each car, $6,995 of that is equipment that is added into the car, like I mentioned, the siren, the lights, the console, that sort of thing. Those items can be paid for out of our drug fund. In addition, the radio, the camera, the computer base, those can be pay, paid out of our drug fund, drug fund as well. And Diane, I think you were gonna tell me, can we pay for the installation of those with the drug fund? Yes. Okay. So that the additional cost of $10,366 could be paid out of our drug fund, which right now is fairly healthy. So with that being said, then <clears throat> let's backtrack a second. So for each SUV, how much is general and how much is drug? What do I want to get out of calculator? Yeah, I'm going to have to. Okay, uh, sorry. $13,990, what we get from the dealer. And then in addition to that, $20,732 for the equipment, the radio, the the in-car camera and the installation of those. Nice. <clears throat> I still need to know what the total general fund amount is and the total drug fund amount is. Correct? And, and if I may ask, yes. you, you mentioned the base, you mentioned the radio and you mentioned, but I didn't hear about the computer slash laptop. Is that, that cost would be, that's in our figures for the equipment for the officers. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's in that equipment cost. Okay, right. I missed and that. also, uh, uh, I talked to the Ford dealer that has the state contract, the state contract prices, talked to him today, their representative, and they don't have any SUVs on the lot. He said that they sold the last one that they had five minutes before I called him. They're expecting them by the beginning of April. And if the council approves it, then I will call him tomorrow, tomorrow and order those two cars. Chief, the, the two new cars, would those go to the two new officers or they go to the senior? No, ma'am. Okay, that's what I was hoping. We're not gonna give a brand new car to a rookie. 
That's what I'm saying. Even though the people that we are recruiting to fill these two positions, because of the timetable we're looking at, we are going to be recruited, recruiting candidates that are already Tennessee post certified. Because if we hire somebody that's not already Tennessee post certified, we have to send them to a 12 week academy and they're not going to help us any. And some of the officers have gotten wind of this and they've been talking to people and it looks like we may have a pretty decent pool of candidates. So to go back to the vehicles, okay. if I heard you correctly, um, each vehicle was 40,517. Out of that 4517, you said 6995 is equipment. Correct. Which means each vehicle is 33,522 general fund. Correct. In addition to that, you said the total amount of the drug fund per vehicle would be 10,366. No, sir, I'm mis that's not correct. Okay. If you add, you have to add the 6995 out of the drug fund twice. Right. Plus the, the equipment that we would uh, install post receiving the cars would total 20,732. So those two figures together, uh, 13,990, 20,732. That's the amount that would come out of the drug fund. And I added everything together except those two numbers for this. So, make sure. <clears throat> so the third, there's a 13,990. That's the, that's the 6995 twice. Correct. Okay. Then the 20,732, that's the 10,366 <laughs> twice. Correct. So it was 10, okay. So, the, and that 10,366 does not include the 6995, obviously. Correct. So then that means it's 6995 plus two. So you got 2732. Let's say you're checking me right. 34,722. So you have 33,522. <laughs> you have 67,044 out of general fund, and you have 34,722 out of the drug fund. And that's the math that up. Just the cars. Yeah, that's just the cars. Right. And then the salaries. Correct. But I'm talking about for. If we're gonna, if if the council is gonna approve buying them tonight, correct. We need to know what the numbers are. That you're right. Approving sixty-seven zero forty-four out of the general. I know Mr. Litchford will be drafting a resolution on that. Yeah, can you give us those numbers again? Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven zero forty-four for general fund. Then thirty-four seven twenty-two out of the drug fund. Yes. And the drug funds has over $70,000 in it that can be used for one-time purchases for law enforcement. A very strict fund. You can't buy vehicles with it, you can't buy. Well, you can buy vehicle. you can buy. If car. it's used specifically for, yeah. Yes. But you can buy all the other pieces like, for the vehicle. Uh, it said you can what is it you buy the gun but buy the gun buy but the not the bullets because bullets are everyday use hopefully not but unless you're training i'm sorry you can buy the dog but you can't buy the dog food yes exactly okay and then and just to reiterate the three months the, the difference between mentioning the three months and the year is because it would be a required budget amendment for the next three months because it's in this budget Correct. cycle so that's the reason we're noting the three month and then the ongoing annual increase would be uh in the budget for these two officers yes all right any other discussion um I just, are you okay with that mark or do we need to take a break to get it together or are you numbers together are you comfortable well, we're going to do both of them for the officer hirings as well as the vehicle. Well, the officer hirings, they don't have to approve the officer hires. They have to approve the budget, budget amendment, amendment right, in connection for the officer that. hires, which Diane was going to do at the next meeting. Yes, I'll present the first reading budget amendment right. at the first That's meeting in March. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I'm fine. I would like to, let's make sure we've got this one with respect to the vehicle since you do want to get those ordered. Yes, that'd be a resolution, yes. Um, and we can do that by the resolution here. Um, um, so resolution 3122, right? I believe that is. So we'd be requesting approval to purchase two vehicles on state contract. And I have this recorded so we can do that. Tell me if I say it wrong. Two vehicles on state contract from the vendor. Lonnie Cobb Ford. Lonnie Cobb Ford uh, for two Ford uh, Interceptor SUV vehicles um, with the cost being uh, 33,000, I'm sorry, 67,044 out of the general fund and 34,722 out of the drug fund. Now, with that number being said, the actual amount we'll be paying for the vehicles each from Lonnie Cobb Ford would be 40,517. Correct. 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 Because you need that number for the resolution. And yeah, to, should... to clarify, I know it's a lot, but to, uh, the in-car camera, the uh, in-car radio, and the computer, in-car computer mount, those would be added to the car once we receive them. They don't come from the Ford dealer like that. The, yeah, the equipment would be coming out of the drug fund. You're right. That's the 34,722. Total, yes. Okay. All right. So this would be resolution number 3122, 31, a resolution of the City Council for the City of Eastridge, Tennessee, to approve the purchase of two police vehicles on a state contract uh, from Lonnie Cop, from vendor Lonnie Cop. Um, which would come from for two Ford Interceptor SUV vehicles for um, the amount of $67,044 out of the general fund and $34,722 out of the drug fund. For vehicles and equipment. Nope, that's right. For vehicles Some of the equipment's equipment. not from Lonnie Cobb. That's why I said that's right. the, the actual purchase from Lonnie Cobb would be $40,517 each. That's right. And then the other would be the and then the General remainder funders. would be added equipment That's right. from various vendors. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion for resolution 3122. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 3122. Second. If you have a motion to approve by Vice Mayor Chauncey and a second by Councilmember Hilton. Do you have any discussion? Yeah. Chris, you don't have to get B uh, bids on the t on the cars not if it's purchased to a state right. contract because exactly. that's already been bid through the state and then we're able to to purchase them that way and and honestly if i may if we had to go through a bid process we were wasting our time but there's no way we would get them when we need them we would start that with the next budget but we don't have to do that i'm just glad they're making them now i am too well we you're the last time we are looking at f-150s at 1.2 and uh, ford will not start manufacturing those until august all right any other discussion roll call miss middleton vice mayor chauncey yes council member cagle yes council member helton yes council member witt yes mayor williams yes Thank you very much. Thank I, you. I have one question on the two officers. Have, have we approved that or have y'all approved it? They don't, Can I post the position tomorrow? Yes, because by the time uh, you post an interview and come back, we'll have already had the first reading of the ordinance and fund right. meetings because they have to approve the funding. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That includes all the business on the agenda so we'll move to item k discussion of tended agenda items for march 11 2021 council meeting so before we get to the old business i would say that we would need to add a um, presentation or presentation for the employee service awards we will have four employees that reach another milestone next month 
that actually reached it this month and will be awarded next month. There's a, I won't give away the names yet, but there's a, someone with 25 years, 15 years, 10 years, and five years. So again, we thank all our employees that make our city run smoothly and great. Um, then we'll move in O business under item A, it would be the second final reading for ordinance number 1144, an ordinance of the city council of the city of East Ridge, Tennessee to amend the zoning regulations and zoning map of the city of East Ridge, Tennessee, so as to rezone the property located at 6205 Ringo Road, tax map 169L F040 from R1 residential district and M2 light industrial district to C2 general commercial district. Any discussion on that item? I see none. Under new business, currently we have none. I do have an item that I would like to add. Um, I've been reached out by um, Alicia Stanfield with the East Ridge Needy Child Fund. She's asking on behalf of the East Ridge Needy Child Fund to formally waive the fees for the use of the arena on August 7th, August the 7th for their fundraiser. Um, they'd like to host a collectible toy show with approximately um, hundred vendors or so, and we'd like to host a cruise in outside the arena in conjunction. So uh, she's asked me to bring that to the council to, for consideration. And we'll have to make sure uh, Parks already has an, a contract or agreement already drawn up by that time. If they can't, we may have to postpone this. I believe they've already done that. I think they're just asking for the fee to be waived. Because yeah, we haven't signed it yet. Okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. If, I if agree. it's done- Totally agree. It, Whenever we get that agreement, then we can do this at the exact same time. So if it's done in two weeks, then I agree it'd be on okay. the agenda. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. That's all that uh, we have. Is there anything else? Budget oh. amendment. Oh, yes. Officers. Thank you. All right, get that added. Anything else, council? Uh, you're nothing else. I do have one more thing before you yes, adjourn, sir. just a, a quick announcement. I didn't mention, if we're done with the uh, agenda. Uh, I don't, no one, we're done. No one actually. I don't know if I voted. mentioned it at the last meeting. I think I did. Um, the liquor store applications are out. Um, we've had 25 interested parties pick up copies about, approximately 25 people have picked up uh, applications. They are due on March 15th. I just wanted to announce that to come back. And then the rest of the process we've talked about, we've already talked to the auditor and they're very happy to come in and, and make sure they take care of the part that they're going to need to uh, when it comes to selection at the end, but we'll vet them and do background checks and all that. But I just wanted to announce that they're, they're due on March 15th. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. With no other business, I will adjourn this meeting and everyone have a great evening. Thank you.